Welcome back, Agent Nation. My name, of course, you know me. You know me. You subscribe to the channel. Is Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. Thank you to SeatGeek for helping sponsor this episode of Drama Alert. SeatGeek, of course, is an app that helps making buying tickets easier and more affordable. What event are you trying to go to? Me, I'm trying to go to a Raptors game, ladies and gentlemen. NBA season just began. SeatGeek.com. You can do any event. Comedy, sporting event, concert, name it. I'm gonna type in Raptors. Yo, that's so weird. The Toronto facility is called the Scotiabank Arena now. It's gonna take a while to get used to that. Now let's say I'm trying to see the Raptors stomp on the Celtics for a game. Boom. It gives you a view of the facility. On the left-hand side, it sorts the tickets based on value so you know when you're getting a good deal. On the bottom right, it's telling you, you better hurry up, my guy, because the tickets are selling out. Let's say I want to sit on the nosebleeds all the way back here. Boom. You can get a photo of what that seat would look like had you purchased it. It even rates your tickets for you. So if you see green, good deal. Scroll down to the bottom, you see red, that's a horrible deal. Probably don't take it. There's no way you could go wrong. Click the link at the top of the description. Use code AGENT at checkout for $20 off your first purchase. All right, let's get into it. For our first story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, NBA Playgrounds 2 just released a couple days ago, and I'm here to, to to put together a proposal for NBA 2K. Now, if you don't remember, NBA 2K bought NBA Playgrounds 2 in early spring. They delayed the game for five months, et cetera, et cetera. The game finally came out a couple days ago. Now, you think with all that extra time and NBA 2K not being the publisher, it'd be super polished. And I didn't notice any game-breaking glitches or anything like that, but it just didn't have that it factor when I was playing it. I didn't feel like I could actually stay on that game and it would have a decent replay value over a long period of time. It just felt like something that was fun for a video. 2K, the game right now is priced at $30 Canadian. I implore you because I know it's gonna blow up if you do. Drop the game for free. Everybody's gonna try it. If the game is free, everybody's gonna try it. And then they're gonna invite their friends to try it. Everything is more fun with friends, because as it stands right now, I literally don't know many people with the game that actually purchased it. Everybody I know that has the game got a code from somebody else and got the game for free. If the game drops for free, man, it could really blow up. And then at that point, it, it's, it's all on the game. If the game is good, it'll last. If the game is not, then it'll die out. But listen, it's gonna die out regardless if the game isn't good, so take the risk, 2K. Drop the game for free, that's all I have to say. For our second story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the Pro-Am community is livid. It is almost a month and a half into NBA 2K19's launch, and the only feature that was added from NBA 2K18 to 2K19, private matchmaking, has still not been addressed. And it's not only that, but we still haven't heard a word on when it's gonna be addressed, or if they found a fix, if the the patch is already sent out to PlayStation and Xbox. We have no clue what's happening. And there's a lot of people playing pro and they're spending hours and hours and hours trying to get into games. And for me, I'm trying to get into pro am but I definitely don't want to do it without private matchmaking. I Man, I saw I saw NBA 2K League managers, I saw Brian Mazik and players getting involved in conversation on Twitter just incredibly frustrated that a, a developer like Visual Concepts and a publisher as big as NBA 2K can release a game. And keep in mind, this this mode has an eSport attached to it that's backed by the NBA, so you would think maybe it gets some priority. But no, it doesn't get any priority, and it hasn't been addressed. It doesn't seem like a difficult fix. It's private matchmaking, but apparently it is a difficult fix because nothing's been done yet. I don't know what it is with 2K. Like, it, you don't have enough people? Hire some. Hire some. Your profits are off the charts. Just hire a couple people to help with the pro am issue Fix Pro-Am, because I really want to play it. The people already pro playing Pro-Am really want it to work. And left and right, we're hearing glitches and stories of Pro-Am teams being deleted and people spending hours trying to get into games and this glitch here and that glitch there. Fix the issue or at least communicate when that issue is going to be fixed because people are starting to get restless and give it a couple months, the mode is going to completely die out and there's no NBA 2K League that's going to save it. It'd be a shame because Prime is the mode I was most excited about coming into NBA 2K19 and I refuse to play it without private matchmaking. It's gonna be the same thing as NBA 2K18, but buggier. I didn't think that was possible. I really didn't. For our third story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how annoying did it, but he always manages to find himself in some more drama. This time it's with Nadex. On Twitter, they were going back and forth and things escalated pretty crazy. Things popped off on Twitter, annoying said, I suggest you keep quiet before things go left. Yeah, listen, I'm trying to see things go left. I'm trying to see that. 
Everybody at this point was tuning in and annoying put on the show. Put out his first tweet saying, Dude bought the Nate XC Live channel for 1K. Who remembers when it was changed to Park Random? And he took the account back, stop frauding. Now, annoying, this is the point of the video where I explain to you, you have to use commas and periods, my guy. It is difficult to make sense of some of these tweets without proper grammar. Annoying actually put out an entire 30 minute video on the situation explaining in detail. And to summarize what happened, basically this. So Nate XC had a second channel called Nate XC Live and he sold it to one of his biggest fans for $1,000. That fan was named Park Random. Now, Nate then went to YouTube support and reported it as stolen so he can get the account back and keep the $1,000. So that's why Annoying is saying that he quote unquote scammed his number one fan. That fan, Park Random, also posted a video proving at one point that he did have access to the account and that, that Nade actually changed the password. And so all of this is looking legit and is definitely not looking nice. If you're gonna scam anybody, my guy, why would it be one of your biggest fans? That's the one person, if you're a, if you're a horrible human being and you can scam someone anyway, you at least don't scam your biggest fan. That's the worst person to scam in a situation like that because he, he trusts you, he's your fan. So it's not a good look. Annoying, of course, continued on Twitter. Some of the tweets Annoying put out last night are now deleted. I don't know why, because he talked about them again, reiterated them in the video that was 30 minutes long. So it's like, you could have just kept the tweets up for this drama alert, man. Now this next part, I, I will never be able to unsee, and now you will never be able to unsee. You got a whole girl, what are you? Yo, this is gay. This is a video of Nade just just deep throating a microphone, man. Because it's 2018 and the rational decision on a live stream, is, why not? I mean, I don't know if he lost the bet. I do not know the context of the situation, but under no circumstances on any of my live streams have I just picked up a mic and shoved it down my throat, man. I've never done that. Who knows if it's a mic? I just think it's a mic because that's probably what he has sitting on his desk right beside him. Can't imagine he has any other toys on his desk while he was streaming. So Annoying kind of capped things off with this tweet when he said, Law, okay, I'm done being petty. This guy's life is miserable. Car repo, no sponsorships, banned from Twitch, no collabs, because no YouTubers with you. Exposed for being a scammer and exposed for being a racist. Had to move back with his parents. You got a lot to worry about right now, so I'ma leave you. In his video, Annoying went into detail saying there were situations where Nade was struggling financially and Annoying was giving him support and just showing him love and giving him advice, etc. So these guys used to be friends, then out of nowhere, boom, like yo, Nate is posting like pictures of Annoying when he was 10 years old, roasting him, saying that he gets no girls or that he clout chased him his whole career, saying he's not, it's just a huge ego contest from people that used to be friends. Bro, I'ma say, I'ma say this, and I'ma say this, I'ma say this. On YouTube, if you plan on being a YouTuber, I'ma just let you know off rip. Assume that any of your private conversations with somebody could at some point go public. Whether he decides to like roast you and expose you with this or that, or whether somebody hacks that guy's account and just takes screenshots of stuff. So we've seen on Twitter last month, DJ Academics was hacked. His, his DMs were just live, public information. Be careful what you say out there, ladies and gentlemen. Anything you say that's private, just give it a year or two and it can be public and you never want that shit coming backfiring on you. I learned that a couple years ago. People dead ass have exposed folders just ready and prepared as like ammo just in case something pops off so you can bury somebody. Ah, that's some snake. I can't associate with anybody who owns an exposed folder. That's not a friend of mine. Anyway, I thought the drama was funny. The drama escalated and we can call this our third story of the day because Annoying and J Fox got in a beef. If you don't know who J Fox is, J Fox is the first 98 overall in NBA 2K19 on both the PS4 and the Xbox One. He's the first guy to get it. No one knows what his method is, but when Whenever he hits 99, it'd be nice if he shared it with the world. At the start of some of his most recent videos, J Fox has been, he's been saying this. That's when that's who the best. Yo, annoying, huh? Kill yourself, my nigga. Hold on. So admittedly, after a couple weeks, I'd be pissed off. Annoying started to take some shots at J Fox. So annoying is taking shots at Nade, Nade taking shots at annoying, annoying at J Fox, J Fox back at Nade, and then you would think that like maybe Agent that Annoying was out of the drama. No, because Annoying and Hank the Tank had some more drama too. I, how do you do it, Annoying? Bro, I, I can't keep track of all the drama. All right, let's keep a long story short. Annoying dropped the video titled, 
Trash Talking 95 overall YouTuber gets destroyed in event after Talking Smack NBA 2K19. Hank was pissed off because in this video, Hank was using his glass cleaner, not his playmaker, which was 95 overall. And so I guess if I was annoying, I'd be like, well, you still did have a 95 overall YouTuber. And I don't know this Forelli guy, but maybe he's a YouTuber. And so annoying could have been talking about him. I think Hank deleted some of the tweets, but he left this one up saying, I didn't know my glass cleaner was a 95 overall. So is this is just new computers. oh I have a new computer new guys computer new setup soon it's heavy put it back it is so heavy <laughs> hold it, hold it. put it back wait, wait a second Willie, I'm slipping. are you serious no bitch <laughs> for our next story of the day I actually forgot to talk about it in the first story of the day yo someone explain to me why I'm not at NBA playgrounds too like I was in the first one and I don't know if I don't remember saying anything reckless in the first in the first one, I, I shot a couple videos on there. I guess they weren't really messing with it, man, because they don't took my ass out the game, man. And I know they have my player model. It's not like they had to make any changes to my player model. They didn't add any graphics to the game. And I see Jesser on there. I see Cash on there. I saw Nick the Bulls fan and Hip Hop Gamer on there. I was like, where is... Where is Agent, man? I, I, I want to be on the game, man. I love being in video games. Anyway, sad day. That was, that was part of story number one. I just forgot to mention it. For our final story of the day, the previous top rep in NBA 2K19, he got passed up by Jay Fox, was a guy known as Flampo. Now this Flampo guy supposedly hit 97 overall, and he quote unquote got exposed for photoshopping it because at the time he was 95 overall, although none of that could really be verified. It's a lot of he said, she said. Long story short, he's claiming that very urgent, my rep has glitched for the second time. I hit 98 overall and I didn't receive any upgrades for it. And then my bar got pushed back. No VC, no rep, no upgrades. Please DM, this has to be fixed. Should I still be playing? very urgent. So of course he's pissed off. According to him, he's saying, listen, I did all the grind to get to 98, and then I didn't get an upgrade point for it, even though he already double barred. But there is some people calling into question his integrity, because in the past, he got exposed for quote unquote Photoshopping, being the first 97 overall, even though at the time he was, according to some people, a 95 overall. So pretty much every year with top rep, there is drama. You remember Nate XC Orlando beef that was going on for as long as you can remember? It seems like there's even more drama this year. He's claiming that he got cheated out of being the first 98 overall. J Fox made a video saying that Flampo was lying and he was just using it to try and get sympathy because he got beat. Flampo followed up with a tweet saying, to top off with all the BS, I got six double bars total at some what what a yo 2k community just use punctuation my guys commas periods bro they help all right he did say to top off with all the bs dot 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 i got six double ballers total at some of the hardest and longest time taking overalls no one else in the world would have i give up all right just use a comma next time he's saying he got cheated out of it uh j fox is saying no you didn't bitch you just got beat and you're making up lies to make yourself feel better because he got caught photoshopping some stuff in the past and now he nobody trusts him anymore long story short kaboom ladies and gentlemen everybody's just mad at each other because apparently it's a huge competition to get to 99 overall yeah i'm gonna tell y'all off rip like this man if you guys are grinding my career this year you have to at some point convert that into whether it's on Twitch or on YouTube, you have to develop, you have to use the clout you developed on the game to grind creating content. And I know some people that like to grind 2K don't like to edit videos or to re record videos or to stream for whatever reason. But yo, that's how you make your money. You're not making money playing 2K. You're only making money playing 2K if you upload yourself doing it. And so at first it might be cringy or bad content, but work your way up there. There's a lot of money to be made if you're a top rep and you actually successfully really kill it on YouTube or on Twitch. So whether you're the first 99 overall or the 50th one, find a way to make it count and drop some videos, man. I'm being serious. All right, that's it, man. That's it for this drama alert. Everybody's going at each other's throats. I'm just trying to stay out the drama. I'm just reporting it. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Click on one of these two videos if you didn't watch them. I'm out. Peace. That was like take 65, ladies and gentlemen. My throat is killing me.